Hi guys, welcome. Thank you for joining for our national monthly meeting today. Excited to hear updates from each of you and I'll have some things to share um, just about our chapters and what's going on um, with our job board and some other things, but um, we'd love to just take this opportunity to hear from each of you. So um, Elizabeth, why don't we go ahead and start with you? Perfect. Hi guys, um, we just came off of a really great showing at RepFest. Um, we had one of the largest attended um, panels, so really super thrilled that um, we had such good turnout. Um, we're working with RepFest on whether or not we can use that panel going forward. Um, it looks like we're going to be able to use it um, after their replay section is done, so I think that's for 60 days. Um, so we should be able to use it on our website, YouTube channel, and all of that. So more to come on, on being able to use that content moving forward. Um, so it was really good showing, really excited that that um, took place. We had a really good panel. So hopefully if you're not able to see it, um, once we get it um, able to be shown to the wide, wide worldwide audience, then we can um, share it with you guys as well. Um, had a very good conversation with Arena at Equator. Um, we've done um, some initial support um, echo of messaging uh, for one of their events that happened at the end of March, um, and we're talking more about how we can contribute to, um, you know, kind of their, their inaugural uh, class of students that they're going to take on. Um, so there'll be some more that's going to come out of that, but know that we are working with them and we'll continue to promote things that are kind of coming out of, of their space. Um, had a really good conversation with um, UVIF. Um, which is United Voices um, in Travel and Hospitality. Um, and their messaging is um, pushing the Black voice um, in travel media and really just the travel and hospitality space altogether. Um, so we have some collaboration that's going to be coming up with them um, over the course of the next few months. So stay tuned. Um, Josh and I just spoke and I'm going to try to rekindle our um, relationship with the Travel Institute um, and how that actually came up was um, another rep, rep fest panel was um, OCA Travel Academy. Um, so there's a new Travel Academy coming out of TL Portfolio. Um, they're still in kind of the baby stages of putting that all together, um, but I did reach out and just let them know that we're on standby and willing to have a conversation with them when they're ready. Um, so they were very thankful uh, to talk more about that. And then also out of RepFest, um, we have a conversation started with ASTA um, and working closer with ASTA and how we can support their messaging um, with advocacy um, because ASTA and US Travel Association really are the two largest voices for advocacy um, in the US. And we'd, we are hoping that we can um, kind of capitalize on what they're doing um, by echoing their messaging and then getting our members involved and hopefully moving the needle on that as well. Um, so those are kind of some of the projects that we're working on. Um, we will be sending out um, in Asana um, a couple projects. Um, so just to um, give a quick preview, um, one of the projects is um, surveying the members. Um, we really think that this is going to be beneficial moving forward um, when we're wanting to get new partnerships um, to really have an understanding of where our members are now um, and then just asking a few key, key questions um, so that we can really better understand what they're looking for and um, really where they're standing in terms of uh, work. Um, you know, I'm sure there'll be a few other questions that you guys are all contribute to as well. Um, and the other is um, looking for a snapshot of where we are uh, with the membership in terms of social media engagement, um, where we are with membership numbers, um, and then what kind of growth we're looking at month over month. Um, because that's a question that I get asked quite frequently when we're talking to partners um, is, you know, what kind of engagement are we looking at? What kind of membership numbers are we looking at? And so just being able to speak to, hey, this is this is where we're at, this is where we're growing. Um, just to have those numbers as a snapshot um, is kind of what we're looking for. So we'll be sending those um, projects out in Asana here in the coming weeks. So more to come and that's it for me.
Amazing. You've been busy. Thank you so much. That was a lot. Um, a couple of things that I thought of, I know that uh, Michelle's going to share some social media um, statistics with us today, just in um, how we've how we've grown on our social media platform, which has gone from basically nothing to an incredible showing on social media, thanks to Michelle. So I know that she has that information. So she can sh certainly get that to you. I did mention to Josh also that at one point we had like a deck, basically like the slides that kind of outline everything that uh, I think you'll be able to repurpose and update for this for this use. Um, and so it's something that, yeah, we've started and had in the past, but it definitely needs updating. And I know that growing the membership base is something that Carolyn and I are working on a strategy with each of the local chapters as well. Um, and going forward, we're going to implement basically a two-year strategy. Um, at this point, it'll be an 18-month strategy covering 2021 and 2022 that will basically highlight uh, different initiatives that each chapter will be responsible for, um, different components under events, membership communications, and just overall um, exposure of millennials and travel in their in their cities uh, and under the membership um, requirement it'll be you know growing the membership and and assisting Kate and supporting Kate with making sure that our database is accurate and that it's continuously growing so um, there's always overlap as you know with all of our positions so I know what we'll all work with you to support the the things you're working on which is a lot and thank you it's amazing um, I did actually want to ask you one other thing too. I think I put you in touch with Hannah, who's in Miami and the company that she works for. She, so she runs our Miami chapter, but I think she's with like a women in travel organization. So I don't know if, if you've been able to make contact with her about that. Yeah, so we did have a conversation. Um, we were finally able to connect. Fortunately, I had, um, there were a couple times that I was like, oh my gosh, I, I double booked myself. I had yeah, no time and- No problem. So anyway, um, I did connect with her and I said we would absolutely um, promote the events um, that she has coming up. Um, okay. So she um, knows the dates basically that we have um, newsletters going out. I said just get me the information prior so that we can load that. Um, and, you know, she was on our panel obviously for Rep Fest as well. Yeah. Um, and I said, you know, if there's anyone that you need to kind of plug and play in terms of panelists, you know, certainly let us know too. We're happy to reciprocate. Um, so oh. it's, it's certainly ongoing. Um, I know she has an event coming up. Uh, I think I just got a LinkedIn, um, message on it. So, um, I'll double check and make sure that we have that information loaded. And if not, I will put it in the, um, I'll send it over. Uh, so it gets included in the newsletter. Cool. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions or anything to add? Oh, Sorry, I did think of one other thing. Um, with the Travel Institute, I know previously, I'm sure Josh mentioned this, but we had a discount with them, which is part of our exclusive benefits program. So you'll coordinate that with, with Kim, yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think maybe initial talks first. Sure, um, From what I understand. Before we ask for a discount. <laughs> <laughs> from what, from what I understand, we, we want to yeah, maybe mend yeah. some of the offenses that were um, sure. maybe a bit, um, fractured, I won't say broken, maybe just fractured. Um, like holes in the fence were left open. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, so we'll, we'll have a little conversation there. Um, yeah. uh, you know, in all honesty, I, I'm not sure that the name resonates as much as it did maybe at one time. Um, okay. And so, you know, I, I kind of laugh, and this is something that Irina and I actually spoke about, is like, did I graduate for travel and hospitality or right. tourism or anything and certainly not like I came no, yeah. you know came through it a completely opposite direction right? right like and that's I think the majority like there's a really large majority yes. of people that just literally just stumbled, stumbled on into it, it right yeah, like yeah. like that's pretty much it like yeah. the company I was working for went out of business and I needed to find a job and I went and worked you know for a I'm hotel sure. and like that was literally it like that yeah. was the, be the no. beginning so it wasn't a a magical romance with it during college um and so yeah so i think you know is the travel institute really the end all be all is cornell still the yeah. end all be all i'm not sure that that's the case so. okay yeah so, no um, i mean i agree with you it doesn't have that same like clout and like like yeah. people aren't as concerned about you know getting their certifications through the travel institute for sure especially the new kind of age of of like the travel advisor but uh if there's something else out there like you'd mentioned the one at yeah. uh Webpass might be better for us because certainly yeah. if something's archaic and like outdated then millennials and travel doesn't necessarily want to be a part of that right yeah and that's, yeah. And that's, that's part of it that i'm just kind of like 
I, I want to, you know, have an initial conversation with them, but at the same time, like, sure. if we're, if none of us are really hearing that name at all buzz around, like that's yeah. a pretty big indicator that that's, that's not what our generation or generation Z is going to be using moving forward. And so, gotcha. yeah, I, I'm not sure, um, okay. but yeah, yep. I will certainly, um, well, you know, work across the channels to make sure that once we get benefits in place, you know, mm -hmm. that everybody is aware Great. Well, yeah, keep us posted and utilize, you know, the team for whatever, uh, whatever collaboration we can. Did anyone have any questions or anything to add for Elizabeth for our advocacy and relations? Um, yeah, I'll just mention, I know you said you started a conversation with ASTA. I'm not hugely involved with ASTA myself, but I, I have a good friend who's a millennial. I met her on a millennial fam, actually, and she is very involved in like the young, what is it, young professional association yeah. with well, ASTA. Yeah. So if that would be a good introduction at all, she works for Uniglobe host agency, she's in Florida, but if that would be a good introduction, I'd be happy to introduce you. Yeah, great, that would be amazing. Um, I'm speaking with um, the gentleman that I met through RepFest, Corey, and I can't remember his last name. Um, so, you know, certainly it's very initial talk. So anyone else that you wanna introduce me to, that would be amazing. Okay. Um, and I do know about their YPS um, group and um, I, Personally, I'm not that familiar with it, um, so I'd certainly love to hear um, more about it from her. Okay, cool. Awesome. I will, uh, yeah, I'll Thanks. pass on your info to her. Yep. Yay. All right. Anyone else? Nope. Okay. So jumping over to Zach, I know that uh, for philanthropy and outreach, Zach, I know that you uh, and Josh have been kind of trying to connect to talk about um, our philanthropic programs. I've actually started a project on Asana. And so um, maybe you and I can connect maybe one night this week um, in the evening and, and I can make sure that you're kind of up to speed on how to use Asana. It's a project management tool. There's an app you can download for your phone so you can check it on the go. Um, and I've sort of just started the philanthropy project almost as an idea board or kind of like a dump site for ideas that, uh, that we're coming across. But um, I'll let you go ahead. If you have anything to share about philanthropy and outreach at this time. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I'd love to connect with you and that we can take a look at that kind of that, that board that you have created. Um, and right now I don't have any updates, just kind of looking forward to uh, participating in the Dallas FAM whenever I can and yeah. uh, get to meet some fellow members. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited. I know, it, um, I'm sorry that you can't be there for some of the daytime activities, but um, I know that Leslie and Nora have a really fun agenda plan and they're a really good time. And Nora actually was in Nashville and I hosted the Nashville FAM. So, um, so they're fantastic and they'll have a good time. And, and I know, I think she's emailed back and giving you the details for the evening activities. Jump in and join as much as you can. Um, I think we've got, Anina, maybe remind me how many advisors confirmed for Dallas? I think it's now nine. I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So nine advisors. Kim, who's on the call today, is, our, uh, is, a, is the host, the official host. Um, but I think it'll be a great time for you to, to connect with some um, some of the other advisors. And personally, on the Nashville fam, a lot of the advisors were actually new to the industry or new to millennials and travel, which is always really great to see. So it's a good opportunity to, um, to make some new connections. Um, from a philanthropy standpoint, yeah, like I said, um, I've just kind of been dumping some ideas on that, um, on that Asana project. And I'll um, just let me know what night this week you want to connect and we can go over that. Um, and extending to everyone else, if you have ideas for, you know, how millennials and travel can get more involved from a philanthropic standpoint, um, do let us know because I know that's something that's always been on the back burner and in the back of, you know, our minds that we've wanted to incorporate. So we'll just continue to have that be one of the many programs that we grow going forward. So please share any ideas that you have. All right, next up we've got communication. So over to Caitlin and her team. Yeah, so we have um, the main newsletter scheduled for May 18th. So we're still gonna stick with the third Tuesday of every month when it comes to the newsletter. And I've created a project uh, for it in Asana. So the projects for the newsletter were going by month. So you'll probably see like April in there, which is completed, and then May is in there. So if you ever, if you guys ever want to add anything, feel free to do it straight in there. Or if you're more comfortable emailing something over, just you send it over to digital at, and uh, Dustin and I will get it. Um, something that I've also kind of been helping clean up is our media contacts. 
Um, so we kind of have an outdated list that I'm um, kind of cleaning up an Excel sheet. So if anybody has any, um, maybe some helpful media contacts that we can utilize for our, uh, press releases, that would be awesome. Um, Josh wrote up one that we sent out kind of announcing our that our fans are back. Um, and it got picked up by Travel Age Weekly. I can actually, I can get the link and send it in the chat here so you guys can see it. So that was really awesome that we got that picked up. And I'm working on trying to get some more people to pick it up. Um, but yeah, we're, I'm just trying to update the media contact list. So any, any helpful media contacts that you guys might have, feel free to send it over. Um, Monica can I, introduced can I us. A quick, can I ask a quick question about the press yeah. release? Uh, and, and again, I'm, this is a little bit more out of my ignorance when it comes to press and media relations and social media, as you all know, um, but thinking how we can kind of almost like recycle through uh, some of the content just to like generate more exposure. Could we then share the travel, is it Travel Age West or Travel Weekly article on our social media? Yeah, that would be awesome yeah. just to like show the press that we're getting. So once I, once I'm wrap up here i'll get the link and i'll send it in here yeah um, and then of course we need to our i think our press page on our website hasn't been updated yes, please it's been yeah. like from since 2014 which may well be the last I, millennial i know <laughs> i know we really need to push please, so please, like, please. <laughs> i'm just gonna stress what caitlin said if any of you have media contacts send them our way any contacts any freelance writers any contacts anyone that will get us with the media please send them our way i've shared like my contacts through aqua expeditions so <laughs> if you have any please let us know i agree we yeah need i added an asana to make sure we added it to the website um cool. i think jess has just been backed up with work so yeah of course um, we'll well, try and to always it. you know if if there's anything i mean josh and i can both help with like website edits and updates so this is a good message for everyone if there's ever anything urgent like obviously we all work together as a team and you know, our ability to, to be involved will will come and go. So if there's ever anything urgent and you're not hearing back from a member of the team, it might be because they're 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 busy at the moment, but just always ask Caitlin, Josh, or myself or Kate and we can help. Yeah. Sorry, Caitlin, back to you. Yeah, no, no, no. All really great points. Um uh, one other thing is uh, Monica had introduced uh Jess and I to a woman who could um Will potentially be helping us as like a almost like a guest blog writer um so someone that can kind of like jump in and help um you know she's not necessarily like a part of like or actually i think she is going to be a part of millennials and travel with the new york chapter or help in some facet but anyway, right. she's going to help kind of be a guest blogger for us so that's another thing if you guys know anybody that might be able to like you know potentially I don't want to say like donate, but you know, like help with a blog, like every once in a while um, for us to utilize, that would be awesome just to kind of help mix it up. You know, we've kind of been doing blog posts, you know, that we pull from our, you know, events that we've been doing or stuff that's already happening, but we think it would be really cool to kind of like incorporate some, um, something a little bit more creative and uh, maybe something different, like a different perspective from somebody. So if anybody has any thoughts on any um, blog blog writers, um, feel free to also email that over to digital at. Um, and then I know, Anina, you've had some really nice um, testimonials for us. And I definitely want to get that up on our website somehow. I just need to talk to uh, Josh a little bit more in, in depth about what that exactly looks like. Um, I'm not, like the website is probably the thing I'm the least proficient at. So I need to talk to Josh a little bit more and see how we want to make that happen. So but it's on my plate. Like I want that to go up. I think that'd be really helpful for people to see all those. So thank you for continuing to share. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think too, sorry to interrupt you again, but I think uh, that's pretty much it for me. So, <laughs> okay. Hopefully. I was just going to add, I think, um, I think having guest bloggers is the way to go. Like it shouldn't, you know, we don't need one person to be responsible for it. And yeah. it's better, I think, to have, you know, a reflection of many different voices. And I would encourage um, us to even work that into our social media strategy to say like, where are our bloggers at? Like even for the Nashville fam, even like as the host, technically I'm supposed to be the one that writes the blog, but I would rather have one of the travel advisors do it and get that exposure. And quite honestly, most of them, half of them are already blogging anyways. So we're not recreating the wheel. They're basically just sharing a blog that they're already writing for their own website yeah. and giving it to us to also feature on the MIT website. So I think, you know, we should get the message out there like, where where are the bloggers at? And like, we would love to, and, and spin it. Like, 
we're not desperately seeking content. We want to feature you. We want to showcase you. We want to help you get additional exposure uh, and, and, you know, get other people's blogs, basically, that they're already writing also on our website. Um, so I think that's, yeah. that's a way to go and a good message to get out there. Um, awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, and then I was going to add too with the testimonials. I, I threw out the idea to Josh that maybe, um, you know, our press page is also testimonials. So it's like press, it's, you know, sort of a all encompassing, like what people are saying about us, press and yeah. testimonials. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So. Agreed. Thank you. Um, so, I yeah, know Michelle's yeah, going to share yeah. some with us. Does anyone have questions or anything to add for Caitlin before Michelle dives into specifically social media? No? All right, Michelle, over to you. All right. Um, I know we don't have a lot of time, so I have like a little PowerPoint because it's it's more visual always with social. Um, you know, it's not high in depth right now, but this is just to give everyone an idea since I just took over in January just to see kind of the difference until now. So I'm going to share my screen one moment. Can everybody see the screen? Yeah. Okay. I can't hear any. Yeah. So yes, we perfect. Can okay. Great. Um, okay. Hold on a moment, making it larger. Okay. So as I said, this is January to April. So this is just showing the follower growth. Um, since I kind of took over, it was kind of hard to get some of these numbers, but um, from what I see, you know, we're averaging in, you know, Facebook, we went up 51 people. That's followers on our Facebook page since January. Instagram is about 80 and LinkedIn's 82. So, you know, most platforms are about 20 per month and then Facebook's a little less. We also have you know, our Facebook group. Um, that's a little different because we have members and people who like that uh, page. So the members are almost 1900. And I cannot see what was, um, it, it seems it's about the same in January. So that hasn't really shifted. Um, and then I'm kind of going here month to month. So I'm just moving something. So in January, this is um, going over Facebook and Instagram first. Um, if you look on your left, it's going to be Facebook, then Instagram, and then Instagram stories. So kind of dividing them out. So what's doing the best right now is always kind of what we look at and what's not doing the best. Um, but I kind of highlighted on the best to see what we can do more of. So our newsletters and fans do pretty good. Um, in January, I also posted the lease because it was like right when I took over. So I was kind of learning the channel. Um, national plan for vacation day or any kind of National Day usually does really well, especially if I engage with the, the audience. Um, and then job postings. So I posted that job posting in January and uh, several people clicked on it and went to our website. And it's kind of nice. You can kind of see that um, in the back end. Um, one moment. Then uh, when we go to LinkedIn, um, we're kind of doing you know similar themes for LinkedIn. Sometimes they're different, um, but LinkedIn, it was the same type of postings that did the best as well as um, our team growing. So people were really excited that we had new members and it was January, we were kicking off. So that posted extremely well. And then our fam as well and um, our newsletter. Uh, and then we get to February. February, we had a little bit more posts that month. Um, and I did some polls that month and introduced them. And those tend, tended to do really well on Instagram stories. Uh, but again, giving a kind of knowledge of free information or, you know, with classes or jobs, I think really gets people to click and to look. So that did really good on Facebook um, and then our events. So our first virtual event of the year, the wellness one did really good. I also think that photo is really captivating. So a lot of people liked it. Um, and then the polls, as I said, like we had a Super Bowl poll and and we got, you know, I think it was 40 responses and that's pretty high for what I had seen on our, on our postings or anyone clicking and stuff. And then our blog also performed well. And also I think that picture is really, you know, what kind of dive people in. So, and let, stop me anyone, if you have questions, by the way, I'm going a little fast because <laughs> I know everyone, other people have to speak. Um, and then we go to our LinkedIn. Uh, 
this is so LinkedIn, a lot of times we throw in articles, which um, sometimes we do on Facebook too, but that tends to do very well on LinkedIn. You're just giving them more information or if they haven't seen something in the travel related world, they like to click on it. So Black History Month did well. Um, and then again, our newsletter and the, our, our event with the Tin, tin Lounge. March. So March was extremely busy. Um, we had several things happening and several postings. It was probably the busiest since I've been here. Uh, we had virtual vacation day that did really well on all avenues. Um, and then our Nashville fan promotion did good. Uh, International Women's Day, people love that post on both Instagram and uh, LinkedIn and people liked that we kind of put our members there. And then the events. So whenever I kind of I give an event information, you know, people click, I can see people going and clicking on it um, on Instagram stories, as well as the polls. You know, when I ask any question, we get a lot of feedback. Um, we did have that takeover with um, Charleston, like pre-fam story. And, and that was getting a lot of clicks to the hotel and, and people wanting to know where we were going. And in March, I also started polls on on LinkedIn. So polls on LinkedIn um, also are doing pretty well. We get an average of at least 20 people answering. Usually now it's a little bit more because I think they're starting to kind of get used to them on our site. Um, so that's really nice. It, it's a good way to see what people want to do or are thinking or get involved with what just more engagement. So we did two and, and that did great. And then International Women's Day did extremely well. And <laughs> The last month um, we're talking about. So I, you know, I just kind of did until end of last week. Um, I couldn't go all the way till the end of April because um, I started this prior, but all the fans did really well, especially Turks and Caicos. Uh, people were dying to go. Everyone wants to go. Beautiful photos. So that did really well. Um, Dallas as well um, is, is doing, did good, but um, I would say also the National Park Week did super well because I did a, a big story on it on Instagram stories and sharing like where do people want to go, asking questions, and we got a lot of responses. And similar here um, on LinkedIn, where um, you see what people voting, like what they where they want to go up for their next park. Um, you can only put four answers on LinkedIn. So usually I'll say like if you you know, put it in the comments if it's not there. Um, uh, our April newsletter did really good on LinkedIn this time. And then our job posting for um, AAA, or, what, or sorry, American. <laughs> and these are, I don't have engagement rates yet. I can easily get that. Um, but usually I was seeing like an average, for example, on Facebook, uh, high is for us like anywhere from like six to 10%, that's really good. So we're getting that now with some posts, um, but these are just kind of reminders that if, if anyone want, like reshares our posts, it spreads the words better and gets more views and follows and engagement. Um, and just some ideas, like if people wanna do takeovers on Instagram, you know, not just of the fans, but if uh, there's like a travel related topic I said, or a past experience with travel, a lot of people like to see that as well. So, you know, it doesn't just have to be from MIT's view, kind of like the blog, uh, you know, the guest blog. It can be a similar thing, um, not just when we're on FAMS. Um, anytime you guys want to share ideas, we are here. And yeah, that's just, just some numbers and some visuals so you guys can kind of get an idea. That's amazing. Thank you so much. That's like the first time I think we've ever seen Caitlin. I think you'll agree. It's like the first time we've ever seen like stats and like information about <laughs> our social media, which um, again, it's sad since we're millennials, but um, so grateful, Michelle. Thank you so much for recapping that all for us. Um, I love the idea of, you know, guests takeovers. I was terrified to do a story. I did my first one right before I hosted the Nashville fam and if I can do it, anyone can do it, including you, Kate. <laughs> so um, it's it's fun, actually. You start doing it. Now I don't want to stop. Like, I didn't want to stop. Once I started doing it, I was like, oh, I can add this and that. And like, you know, you have some fun with it. So I would encourage, like, if anyone is even going to participate in like a virtual conference mm -hmm. one day or something, maybe, you know, do a couple of stories that day of just 
screenshotting like some of the things you're doing at the virtual conference so like anything that we're doing that's travel related like yeah let's let's all get in there and you know by no means you know do we expect millennials in travel to take over your own personal social media pages but certainly if there's something you want to share um please do because the more we get out there and, and reach you know a broad cast a wider net and, and reach a broader audience the better michelle i did have one question and i don't know if other people mm -hmm. have questions uh and again this is my ignorance with social media um can millennials in travel posts be shared like yes if, if just if they're the group page or the fan page or both well the you're talking about facebook yeah uh, the, the, like are there any restrictions on anything to share because I, I tried to yes. share something today and i couldn't get it to work but. was it the job on facebook yes yes so our, that facebook group is private okay so uh, for when you have a private group you cannot because you know it's only for members gotcha. uh, but our general facebook you can share anything linkedin you can share anything and instagram you can because it's all public okay okay good to know and then um, should we be tagging, um, I have wrote down some notes when I saw the poster earlier, should we be tagging like other companies or people? Like for example, on that job one, should we have it tagged Explora or is that like something you don't do on your own social media page? In this From instance? MIT, I usually actually, like on Instagram, I always tag like if we're, um, you know, going on a fam with a hotel, I always tag the hotel right. or whoever. So I always try to tag, um, that one I would have, I can try to tag, but I'll see because if they're not part of the group, it might like, they might see a tag, but they yeah. might, you know, not be able to do, look at the not post, if that makes it. sense. Should we post it then on the, on the, on the fan page too, that same post, or do you think that's one that should only be in the private group? I think it could be on both. Sometimes I post, um, if it's like job or something related, I post it there first because they're like members and then I'll post it to the idea. public okay. yeah okay so yes so if i post it to the public i could definitely tag all um, all the sure. travels groups okay cool well i know you've got a great strategy in play um from my perspective i've just been kind of like sending content your way through asana and then i leave it to you to schedule as you as you wish and so i encourage everyone else to do the same does anyone have any questions for michelle None? None. You're doing that awesome. Really, I love that. Yeah, that was awesome. Along oh, on Instagram. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, good job, Michelle. That was Thank great. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And if anyone, I could send this out if you guys want to see it. I know, um, Elizabeth, you were talking about like how people ask you for numbers um, and engagement and all that. So usually, I mean, how I used to kind of do it, it'd be like a monthly thing, but that's, it's kind of a lot. Uh, for, for doing four months in this period is a lot because you have to go back. So I don't know if like it's something we want to do every like six months or whatever. We could talk about it as a group. Yeah, honestly, let's, let's use the stats that. where we look the best. <laughs> yeah, it's honestly it's the um, the biggest stat that I would just use is that I think second slide that you had, which just is the total. So the followers. You know, yeah, just giving okay. me uh, basic numbers. So you know we're at over four k here, over four k here. You know, like that's those are oh that's yeah the basic snapshot of what we're looking for is okay you know, to have them understand like where um where we're at in our reach right yes so that um that's something i have like i i've never shared it but i monthly like i track our followers so i mean if you guys want access like every month you can just kind of look at how we're growing but you can easily i could send you that slide if you want yeah, we can, and, and Elizabeth, I'll send you that old deck that we had and we can, you know, update it and uh, use that info. But I think this was really great, Michelle. And, and uh, if it's, you know, not too much to ask, like each month when we have these meetings, even you don't even have to go into too much detail, but just like where we're at numbers wise and like maybe like a high and a low or two, mm -hmm. you know, highlights or something um, would be, would be great. Just, it's, it's amazing to me to see like how mm -hmm. much social media that's been done in, in the past few months. And I, I see it all, but it's amazing to see it all in that snapshot. So thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Monica, along with your growth strategy over the 18 months um, and talking to chapters, there can be some strategy in regards to, um, you know, increasing our social numbers as well, um, because yeah. each chapter could possibly do some sort of contest. Um, yeah. You know, that, that, and that would be a great task for the communicate because sometimes it's about finding the task for obviously the officer of events has a very clear and easy task or not easy but a clear <laughs> clearly defined uh, position so that's that's such a great suggestion to have them work on growing social thank you 
Um, okay, so winding down here, um, I'm going to jump ahead actually and go to Anina because I want to make sure that you have plenty of time. I know you've got a lot of fans in the works. You've been doing an amazing job. Um, so I will turn it over to you to give us an update. Okay, so obviously we have our Dallas fam this week, which I'm really excited. Um, thank you to Kim to host this one for us. I'm uh, really excited to see the pictures and the stories. Um, then next up is Turks and Caicos, which um, I'm going to host. We are just finalizing the member, the participants with that. We had two people not confirmed, so now we kind of have to um, go back to some of the others, which is fine. Um, super excited. Then um, the next one is Los Cabos, which actually is going to come down the track pretty quickly. Um, Monica, I have that in, in Asana to check the write-up so we can get okay. that started with the website. I think you that to me for, with a deadline of this Friday, right? Or do we need it sooner? I think I extended the deadline I can do maybe it. even I can until do it. next week. But yeah, it's okay. not super because it's like in the, towards the end of um, July, right? Um, and yeah. then we have one that comes quite quickly afterwards. So we need to just plan for that, which is the Viera Maya. Um, so for Michelle, Caitlin, and Jessica, we that one will be quite, um, yeah, close to, to each other. <laughs> so um, we got to do, yeah, I, I already started slotting it into the calendar and the communication calendar, just because I wanted to kind of set myself a little of a timeline, but, mm -hmm. um, and we can speak that a little bit too, obviously, but that's how I kind of pictured it. Then in September, we have one that's going to be in San Francisco. Um, and we're probably going to tag on Sonoma. I'm confirming that right now with Eric from Accor. And then we have another one in September, which is um, the Bahamas. I was like, which Bahamas, one? Yeah. <laughs> the Bahamas, yeah. Kind of Mercado. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, which is exciting. Um, then next up, October, we're probably going to do our first further international one with London and London. And then um, we want to work with Great Britain um, to do an extension into the countryside, which is really, really exciting. Then up next is, um, and Elizabeth, we have to connect about that one, um, Belmont St. Martin. And then we have another one um, lined up for December um, <laughs> uh, with San Lucia. And then I have actually another one, um, another property company that wants to kind of sprinkle in some of some domestic trips in between. So I just have to work that out if we can do that or not. But if not, I'm going to put that into 2022. But yeah, we have a lot planned. Um, obviously, we're looking for a host. MIT host for pretty much each of those. So if you're interested, please let me know. And also the month that works best for you, because then I can kind of like make a mental note already um, for those. But yeah, exciting hotels. I'm really impressed by the fact of how many of these hotels are approaching us right now and wanting to host with us, which is great, right? Um, and I think it really speaks to they see us, um, they see our newsletters, they see our social, and um, our members are excited, just really excited. We got a lot of good applications for the Turks and Caicos one. It was quite tricky, I think. Very to difficult. Yeah. <laughs> I and was like splitting hairs on the applicants to make the recommendations. It was very hard, but it's, I mean, it's, it's great. Like Anina said, we're getting not only great applicants, but our partners want to work with us because we're bringing them new contacts. You know, one thing that Leslie from Virgin Hotels said was like, I'm amazed that you found these incredible travel advisors that I've never heard of. And even as a supplier, if I'm looking at, at it from that perspective, I had never heard of them either. So um, it's, it's, it's a great program. And you're doing a great job with with putting it together. Um, Let's sorry, get a Leslie yeah. as a testimonial to write that down. <laughs> yes. So. How many people do you guys usually accept per fam? Is it like ten? It depends always on the host what they decide. So Turks and Caicos was only six plus the MIT host. Our Los Cabos one will be more, um, but actually a lot of the ones that are in the pipeline are actually around six people um, only. So. 
which is a nice group, I think, too, because um, this way you can really get to know each other and like the hosts and, and everything. So, yeah, but it always depends. Yeah, we did in the in the past, like some larger ones and, and I've hosted bigger ones, smaller ones. And, and then Nashville was kind of mid, you know, was well on the bigger side with nine. But uh, the smaller groups do work well because you can kind of have those more thoughtful conversations with each other and, and do some more special experiences. Um, but I would encourage, as Anina said, for any of you that, um, you know, the, the hosting opportunity is a benefit to being an actively engaged member uh, of our leadership team. So please um, keep that in mind. It's open to anyone. doesn't matter what your role is, if you're, uh, or even if you're currently furloughed, it's, it's, that's a, a benefit as an MIT leader to be able to host those fans. So let Anina know what your availability is uh, when you can get away from, from, uh, from work or family and uh, host one of our fans. Um, it's a great opportunity. And like I said, if I can do it, you can do it. It's pretty easy requirement uh, in terms of hosting the group and doing the social media. I'm like super excited to host this first fam. Like yeah. I'm going to go crazy on, on, I love stories, my personally, so I will be like. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have a great time. Um, yeah. And, and I think it'll be a good group. Again, new advisors that I, I mean, we had, I think, was it how many applicants? 15 or 16? Or oh, we had more, we had 19, I think, 19 applicants for that one. And I think I knew two people on the list. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, the uh, the people that we're finding or that or that are finding us I should say <laughs> so again that all goes back to like our social media and having you know a broader database of people to reach out to and just kind of getting that exposure um, anything else for fams does anyone have any questions for fams. I know that, uh, yes, we are getting a lot of offers and opportunities and supplier partners wanting to work with us. We have to kind of pump the brakes a little because we don't want to overdo it, buy it off more than we can chew, not just for Anina, but also, you know, for our communications team, because everything that we do with Millennials and Travel involves the communications team. So we're, we're very aware of that. And so we'll make sure that Caitlin and Michelle and Jessica are uh, not overwhelmed uh, as well. And that, uh, the more advanced planning we can do, the better, which I think we've gotten a lot better at, Caitlin, don't you think, <laughs> with our advanced planning? Yeah, I mean, but it also helps when you, when you bring on good people. So it's been really helpful to have people like Anina, Jess, you know, all you guys, Michelle, Elizabeth, Kim, you know, yeah. Zach, it's been really, really like their, you know, dream team here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and with that, it's a really good transition over to Kate and to membership because, uh, all of these awesome initiatives that everyone's working on and our benefits program and our fans and all these things that we're offering, it's sort of like, um, okay, but now what? Or like as much ado, uh, uh, much ado about nothing. Like well, how do we, how does Millennials in Travel grow? What's the future? What's the membership model look like? Um, and most of you, I think, know this, but previously we had a membership model in place where it was a $40 annual fee uh, that gave you membership to Millennials in Travel and all of the benefits, as well as the uh, ability to attend any events uh, if they were in your city at no charge. At the end of 2019, Josh, Caitlin, Kate, and myself developed an entirely new model that was going to be uh, basically a pay per event. So membership was free. And then if you were going to attend an event, it would cost $10 or you could buy an access pass, which would give you uh, entrance to five events for $40. And then the pandemic hit and we couldn't have events. So right now, if you go onto our website under the membership model, that's what you're gonna see. You're gonna see the information about the access pass and in-person events. And if you can believe it, we still get people signing up for that, uh, even without events. But um, I wanted to just spend, you know, maybe our last five to 10 minutes together, kind of brainstorming uh, and see what people think about a membership model going forward. And then Kate, of course, I don't want to uh, steal the spotlight from you. I want to give you the opportunity to talk or share anything uh, that you might have as well. Yeah, I mean, I really don't have that many updates. So I can just take like one minute and then we can open the floor to everybody. Yeah, go for it, please. Yeah, Josh and I are just really and Josh has been a huge part of working on like all the back end tech stuff about the database and integration with the website from Zoho talking to, you know, all the other sites and forms and we've kind of reworked um, the questions on mem the membership kind of drop down on the website like we're no longer going to be asking their physical address but instead we're going to ask their social media handles. So just like things like that like updating things so it's just kind of a slog in getting the database really up to date, but like everything is in Zoho. It's just kind of spring cleaning that we 
we happen to keep going off every month where we need to do really send a blast to people. Um, but it's going to happen. We're getting there. Yeah. You know, there is like a lot of back, back end involved with Zoho because uh, not only are we, you know, obviously starting to use it as our database or client, you know, management tool, but the forms and eventually phasing out the use of MailChimp and using Zoho templates. So there's a lot that's involved in that. And I think the forms is the trickiest part, right? Because you have to format the fields to match and it's it's a whole thing. But um, I think as we shared, as Josh shared on the last meeting, he's been spending a lot of time on, on those forms, which we'll also use for surveys and just a number of, of different uh, ways to streamline our, our processes. Um, so we'll, it continues to happen, it continues to happen, but I know we're actively using Zoho and um, we'll, you know, work again as part of the chapter initiative to grow membership will be, um, you know, directly related to that. So then going back to what I just mentioned, maybe just a little bit of brainstorming, I'd love to hear anyone's feedback and if somebody speak up or I'll just call on you to maybe share some ideas of what you think about a membership model going forward. Do you foresee that something like a paid annual due that can be prorated by quarter uh, to have access to all of the benefits that we offer plus being able to attend events works? Do you think we should do just a pay per event or do you think we should do a hybrid of both? There's a membership fee and you pay for events. Um, does anyone have any ideas or feedback or thoughts on that? And I think it's important too because some of us are in cities with chapters and some of us aren't. So um, that's why I wanna kind of use you all as a, as a pool of information to share your feedback. I guess my first question would be, are we going to continue national events um, once we start in person? I, my my thought and what Carolyn and I had come up with, she she flew into Portland um, a couple weeks ago and we had a little strategy session. What we had thought of is um, that each chapter will do um, six in-person events and then one virtual national event um, per chapter. So with five active chapters, hopefully soon to be six active chapters, that gives us you know, at least uh, an, an, a national virtual event every other month. But only virtual, of course. I mean, eventually we'd love to have a national in-person event somewhere, but that would be sort of from a from a national event standpoint, that would that would be the idea. And we haven't had great attendance to those virtual events, even though I think they're great. I think the Chicago team did a really good job with this last one. Um, so, you know, perhaps I think that they're not dead though. I think virtual events still have a place uh, in our industry if they're if they're done done right and they would be you know, more focused on uh, like a more holistic professional development theme, not just selling Four Seasons Hotels, but some of the other events that we've done, you know, that would benefit anyone in the industry, regardless of which sector you're in. I think virtual events will be, once we can meet in person again, I feel like maybe people are more interested also to do a virtual one again once in a while. I think now everybody's just out Stoomed, I think. I think yeah. people are just like, oh, I need to do this at work. I need to do that. I think that's a reason. And I do think maybe it depends a little bit on membership fee if you have events in your city or not. Because if you mm -hmm. pay an annual fee that's the same amount than someone that's maybe in LA that can go to all these great events, I don't know if that's really the way to go, right? But then if you just charge per event, how do you, what do people pay for all the other things that we are now? exactly prepping up right and and, all and therein the lies benefits. our problem <laughs> this and therein lies why we're having the discussion because again we had an annual membership fee but then you have would have you know someone in and and maybe kim you could share because you've been uh, a part of millennials and travel for a long time and there's never been a, a chapter in your city um but you know it's like the people that don't have an active chapter it's like wait what am i paying for but now yeah. that we have all of you creating all of these incredible programs and initiatives, I think there is a value. Um, so, and I think we should, you know, qu quantify that value and, and uh, you know, make it a more uh, a membership model. But, but I'm, I'm with you, like I go both ways. I think, I think almost a hybrid of both, but anyone yeah. else? I, I kind of like the idea of a hybrid and, and having been a member for a while, even though there wasn't necessarily a lot going on, like in my geographic area, $40 a year is nothing. I mean, I pay, I'm a member of a lot of professional organizations like locally and a couple national ones and $40 a year is so minimal, especially considering like what we're doing to ramp things up. So I don't think as, as someone who lives somewhere where there aren't a lot of 
in-person geographic events, I don't think I would be upset about like, I don't know, whatever you, we land on, $100 a year, $200 a year, whatever it is. I mean, that that feels minimal enough to me because I know what annual memberships and all these other organizations run. Um, but that being said, I think a hybrid model could work really well too, um, because then obviously people who can't attend in-person events maybe wouldn't feel that way. Yeah, I think I'm leaning more towards a hybrid thing as well, because um, not even just, you know, people not having, you know, access to a chapter, you know, in their geographical area, but maybe some people, you know, maybe don't feel comfortable doing it. Like, it's nothing that we would do wrong. Like, even if we provided it, you know, maybe they just don't feel comfortable. Maybe, you know, the vaccine isn't there or, there, or whatever, for whatever they decide, like, it's out of our control. Um, so I'm kind of leaning, I think, towards a hybrid thing, because I also sort of feel like we should, you know, we should really like, I don't know, like quantify our value. Like we do, we do, we work hard, you know, this is everybody's volunteer time. Like, you know, we should charge for that, you know, and like mm -hmm. make sure, sure. And I also think like the level of respect comes from that too. Like making right. sure that we put our value out there of what we're worth. Yeah, you give it away for free. People don't uh, respect it as much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like we yeah. shouldn't shy away from it, you know. And then it, if people don't want it, then we weed out the people we don't that doesn't not so, interested enough in us. So just to clarify, by hybrid model, are you saying it would be like people would pay forty dollars a year to be a member of MIT and pay ten dollars if they want to attend an event? Yes. Okay. Just want to clarify okay <laughs> yeah i think also once you charge for an event and people have to pay that they probably show up more likely rather than if they just you know oh yeah that sounds fun and then they don't show up but you have planned with that kind of you know that number of participants and stuff kind of the same concept as we do with the fans too right you charge a little bit people have a better better sense of commitment yeah, I know an issue that um, that if Josh was here, what he would probably bring up is part of the reason we didn't charge for events in the past is that we have these hotels that are fully hosting the event. So how can we get away with charging? But, you know, that's would essentially be a fee that goes back into the organization. So I think um, I don't know, Caitlin, if you have anything to add on that. But I think if we make that clear distinction, you know, this ten dollars isn't to pay for the F&B at this hotel. It's, it's to go back into the organization and it's a benefit of. Of, of being a member and of attending. Yeah, and I think people will get that. You know, to Kim's point, like $10 for an event is like really, it's, it's not like, a lot, you yeah. know? Yeah, so I really think that, I think people will get it if we explain it that way. And just a question, because I haven't been to in-person events. Like, so in that case, if they're if you're a member and you're paying say $10 for an event, can a non-member attend and they pay more? Is that how those work? I mean, that I, again, we haven't done this model before because in the past it was just if you were a dues paying member, you would attend for free. If you're not a dues paying member, you would pay to go. So that would be, I, I would say, yeah, probably, probably the same thing. Maybe they would pay, you know, $15. Like, not, like, I think, I think, is that what we did in the past, Kate, Caitlin? Like, I think we did like $10 for members, $15 for non members. Exactly. I think so. Yeah. yeah. But that sounds uh, like a while ago. Or yeah. it wouldn't have been, I guess it wouldn't have been $10 to members because so members would have paid that $40 a year. If you're a non-member, you were paying. It would have been to, yeah, for the event. 15 to yeah. attend. Yeah. So, yeah. So maybe it could be almost uh, like $40 or whatever amount we land on, $60, whatever it is, um, a year for membership and then $10 to attend an event if you're a member or 15 if you're a non-member, something like that. Um, and I feel like we were always really good about getting everything covered at the event, like drink tickets and stuff, yeah. which that's another thing that we need to think about when we have yeah. in-person events coming up. Like, I don't know yeah. if hotels are going to be like, definitely wanting well, to give away for free. After we also, I don't feel that it's ethically okay yeah. to ask for it either. And that's something that I'm going over with all of the chapters as well is how do we move forward? You know, like I say this with my job at Aqua, it's like, stopping operations was easy resuming is the hardest part and it's the same thing with millennials and travel it's like how do we get things back whenever you know when everyone's still so fragile right now um and and so we're discussing like different ideas for you know these sort of hybrid events or or thinking outside the box for example um one of the member or one of the leaders from the chicago team had suggested well can we ask a hotel just for a space at the hotel and then like happy hour prices for drinks yeah. and so people will still pay and so maybe those events you know we're not going to charge ten dollars a person or maybe we will but they're sort of 
kind of like our soft launch model that we've done in the past with new chapters, which is, um, you know, just get everyone in the room and, and reduce prices on things as a soft launch to kind of get the word out. So maybe that'll be how we, how we resume events. But yeah, I don't feel comfortable asking. Yeah, that, oh, that was how we cover everything. Like, that's how we started like however many years ago like though one of the like with that you know we didn't have any clout to be like hey pay for this for free like we yeah. you know utilized our relation industry relationships and people were, were able to at least cut like cut give us happy hour prices you know right. so that like almost goes back to the beginning for us which which worked mm -hmm. great like people were still wanted to be there yeah, and I think we'll get back to where we were with these fully hosted events. Um, you know, I had a call with someone that's joining, that's going to join our LA team last week, and he said, you know, he's like, well, like, as a travel advisor, like, I don't want to be asking, you know, hotels for freebies, and then maybe asking them for favors as an, as an advisor, and, you know, that's a delicate dance, and I'm like, yeah, but at the same time, while we're asking these hotels to host us, they're getting a huge benefit out of this. And, and I think anyone that's attending an event in LA has seen it, you know, with a lot of qualified professionals in the door at their hotel, a captive audience, they're doing site inspections, they're, you know, giving a presentation and, and they've got a good audience. And yes, not everyone there is a travel advisor, but maybe there's someone like me that's going to go out and talk about that hotel nonstop yeah. to everyone I encounter. So um, it's a win-win and the hotels in LA definitely see it. And it's, you know, I think we'll grow more and more as we get back to that. But yeah, that's, sort of segue from the conversation, but it's definitely something that, um, that, that we're working with the chapters on because they're really, you know, shy about asking too, given the situation. So we're just trying to find, yeah, the best way to do that. Um, anyone else? Anyone else have ideas? Michelle or Zach? Anything to add? I think the hybrid model is a good way to go and then a soft launch trying to get happy hour prices and kind of easing things back into it mm -hmm. okay. yeah i agree um especially since yeah events aren't everywhere i think yeah. it's, it's fine to pay you know in certain locations and it's kind of like if it's ten dollars that's like a drink somewhere especially here in la so yeah i, I don't <laughs> see a problem with that <laughs> a cheap drink in la yeah, yeah um cheap. Happy Elizabeth, what do you think? Sorry, Elizabeth, I know you already shared, but like, what do you think? Like, Phoenix doesn't have a chapter right now. We had one in the past. We'll hopefully bring one back. But as as someone that doesn't have, and you've been to events and and you've also worked with other organizations, do you think charging an annual fee to be a member and also charging for events would work? I think so. I think it's giving okay. um, the members. You know, you you have to commit somewhere right because mm -hmm. if, if it's free there's no commitment you're like okay i signed up i'm getting a newsletter but there you've got to have some commitment and to have it well, as minimal as 40 dollars. i mean that's nothing like they, like everyone was saying um yeah. and then a 10 dollar buy-in for events like that's nothing that's absolutely yeah the nothing. pros lunches so. are like pros lunches if i recall yeah. they, I mean, they can range anywhere from like 40 to 60 dollars right yeah, yeah so for, I think they're like for, 60. Yeah. yeah, so for us, it's 45 for members and 50 okay. for guests in Phoenix. So I mean, obviously the, you're covering probably some of the actual costs for the food. But yeah, yeah like because lunch. Yeah. so when we went into the pandemic and we were doing um, re-ups on pros, um, I was like, okay, well, let's make it no money, right? Because everybody's lost their jobs, the whole nine years, right? right? And our board said, absolutely not. We had to have some buy-in. So we reduced mm -hmm. the price. Um, to 20 bucks, right? Like okay. they're basically, basically saying like you either, um, you know, go spend the 20 bucks at Starbucks or you buy into this organization that you think right. is worthwhile and has value. Yeah. And we had, um, we had literally all but five people re-up. So, wow, um, you know, like we had a huge re-up. So, so it was good to see that people were still wa wanting to make that commitment, um, <laughs> you know, but we gave obviously some you know discount obviously due to sure. the, due to what was going on no i think um, that's great but it, it, it helps makes people like recommit to something and, and i think if you yeah. you know were struggling and and maybe you know are unemployed or were unemployed like having this connect having a connection is actually more important than ever right mm -hmm. so for sure. And then I'll just quickly um, also speak to um, the supplier side of things. Don't yeah. be surprised that suppliers have the budget right yeah so don't be you know yes there is some sensitivity there certainly especially for the major um cities like new york is now just reopening 
you know, LA is now just reopening, but like mm-hmm. Dallas, forget it. You guys have been open this whole time. Right. So like, <laughs> you know, like it's the same with Arizona, right? Like if yeah. you ask anyone in Arizona to host something, they'd be like, yep, come on down. You know, right. they've been running at 80% occupancy. It's been insane here. So, right. you know, just, I think it's, yes, let's obviously be very cautious of what, what the ask is, but mm-hmm. don't be surprised that the hotels aren't with budget and able to do more than you think. So mm-hmm. it's a delicate dance, as someone said, certainly. Yeah. Um, but they, but certainly the hotels need the publicity as well, right? They need people right. through the doors. Right. So it's yeah, also... Exactly it's also a good time to talk partnership, right? Um, so I, I agree with everyone saying, you know, do happy hour, at least they have some revenue coming in and they mm-hmm. also have clients coming through the door. Right, really, really good. I think I should just leave it at that. I think you summed it up perfectly. And like what I wanted to hear, does anyone else have any feedback they'd like to share on the idea? So. Uh, Caitlin and uh, Kate and Josh and I have a monthly meeting in a couple of weeks. So I think we'll kind of maybe Caitlin will do like a final review of how our membership model should be going forward. I think it would be best to at least lock in what we're going to do by the end of May so we can start to roll out the news in June. And then, you know, my hope is that chapters that are comfortable with having in-person events, which is most of them, um, I think Chicago is the only one that's a little more hesitant, but the rest of our chapters are ready uh, to resume in-person events, especially Miami. They've been waiting, <laughs> they've been ready a long time. Just like you said, Florida, Texas, Arizona, you guys are ready. Um, so that's sort of the timeline. Um, I think that's all I have. Does anyone have anything else to add before we sign off? I promise to be under an hour. We're just about there. No. Nope. Okay. Well, thank you all. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. And- yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all. Nice to see you. Thanks so much. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.